Welcome to this webinar presentation discussing some highlights from the Underguide Rating System, Technical Procedures, Version 15.2. This is part one of two webinars that focus on new and clarified protocols as specified in the technical procedures. This webinar may serve as an advanced study guide to members of the existing network who are preparing to write exams. Of course, it is understood that one's years of experience and program experience, be it existing or new housing, will factor into what may or may not be new material in the procedures. It is encouraged that those preparing to write exams read and study the applicable documents in their entirety. We will now proceed to the Enterprise Rating System, Technical Procedures, version 15.2. The technical procedures are comprised of seven main sections. Section 1 discusses how to determine house eligibility and provides a brief introduction to the four Energuide Rating System services. Section 2 discusses the soft skills and technical skills that an energy advisor must possess to offer the Energuide Rating System services. Mandatory equipment, photograph requirements, and an overview of on-site activities are also included in this section. Sections 3 to 6 detail each of the four Energuide Rating System services, along with the scope of work and outputs for each. Section 7 discusses lower door testing procedures. For the most part, the technical procedures is a data collection manual. It describes on-site data collection requirements, while the Energuide Rating System HOT2000 User Guide specifies how the collected data is entered into HOT2000. References to HOT2000 and the technical procedures are used sparingly, though in some sections HOT2000 and modeling procedures are referred to. The technical procedures manual is close to 200 pages long, including the appendices. Effort has been made to make this a very comprehensive data collection manual, touching on each data collection point required for the Energuide Rating System services. For those in the industry, Collection of most of these data points will already be part of present business practice. Additionally, workarounds and clarifications formerly presented in Quick Notes have been integrated into this manual. This webinar will highlight new or clarified procedures. Section 1.2 is Eligible Housing Types. Pay special attention to Figure 1. To accommodate an increasingly common house construction approach, houses with four partial stories above ground are eligible for evaluation under the Energuide Rating System, as long as they meet the other program requirements. In the interest of protecting homeowners' personal information, Section 1.4, Energuide Rating System Services, states that house files are not transferable from one homeowner to another. Service organizations may request house files from Natural Resources Canada, but only for the homeowner who originally paid for the service. Section 1.4 also provides a brief introduction to the four Energuide Rating System services, along with the purpose of each service and their outputs. These services are the Basic Service, Renovation Upgrade Service, Construction Blower Door Service, and Construction Upgrade Service for New Homes. Each of these services and their outputs will be discussed in the Technical Procedures webinars. Section 2.2, Skills and Duties, states that energy advisors are required to be knowledgeable of each of the four services and qualify to offer each. Note, too, that an energy advisor must be present for the entire duration of the on-site evaluation and must personally model the file in HOT 2000. Section 2.3, Refusal to Perform an Energuide Rating System Service, indicates that an energy advisor may refuse to perform a service on an otherwise eligible house if it is deemed that performing the service would expose the energy advisor, homeowner, or the house itself to an unacceptable level of risk. If a service is refused, it is the responsibility of the energy advisor to provide the homeowner with written notification indicating why the service was not performed. Appendix A, Risk Assessment of Mixed-Use Buildings, provides guidelines on how to determine the risk level of a house. Section 2.4.1 is Mandatory Equipment. The only new piece of equipment listed in this section is a low-E detector that is capable of measuring low-E coating on two panes. 
The reason for requiring this equipment is that the presence of low E has a significant impact on a window's energy efficiency, especially since air conditioning will be accounted for in HOT 2000 under the EnerGuide rating system, version 15. Minimum computer requirements are also specified for the use of HOT 2000 and the report generator. Further on equipment, section 7.2, lower door equipment, also includes a revision. Only a digital manometer or digital pressure gauge may be used. The use of magnet helix gauges is not permitted. See Appendix I, Blower Door Technical Specifications, for more information. In Section 2.5.1, On-Site Protocol, General, take note that the Energide Rating System Evaluation Authorization Form must be signed by the homeowner for the homeowner to receive the basic service and renovation upgrade service. If the homeowner refuses to sign the authorization form, the service will not be provided. This is the same form that is currently used for existing housing. Section 2.5.2, .2, On-Site Activities, encourages, if possible, to obtain the homeowner's email address. This will enable the emailing of PDF reports and the label to homeowners and providing web links to applicable online publications and additional online resources. This is a significant change. Natural Resources Canada does not require that energy advisors or service organizations print and mail reports and labels to homeowners unless they do not have an email address or internet access. This section also explains the requirement to provide homeowners with relevant health and safety information. For the presence of vermiculite, refer the homeowner to the web page seen here. Two new health and safety publications have been developed too. The combustion spillage fact sheet is named Combustion Gases in Your Home, Things You Should Know About Combustion Spillage. The new ventilation publication is How to Get the Ventilation You Need in Your House. These publications are available online only. If a homeowner does not have internet access, the energy advisor and service organization are responsible to provide them with printed copies. When possible, Natural Resources Canada encourages energy advisors and service organizations to send reports and other documents in electronic format. Section 2.6, Photographic Documentation Requirements, List the minimum photograph requirements for the basic service and renovation upgrade service. Photograph requirements are stipulated for exterior building components, mechanical equipment, and the attic. For existing houses, the number of photos is reduced compared to what was required under EcoEnergy. For new houses, this is a new requirement. Listed here are minimum requirements but it is important that as many photos are taken as deemed necessary to provide the best service possible. Note too that the photo of the front of the house that will appear on reports must be taken in landscape orientation. In section 2.7, satisfying data collection requirements, acknowledgement is made that there will be conditions and circumstances that prevent an energy advisor from collecting all of the required data specified in the technical procedures. Typically, data will be more readily available for newly constructed houses. If actual data is impossible to collect, realistic values may be applied or HOT 2000 default values may be used. When this is the case, the energy advisor is asked to indicate that an assumption was made this could be performed by simply putting a capital A on the data collection form next to the assumed data. Section 2.7.1, broken, unused, or uninstalled mechanicals, clearly indicates when to assess broken, unused, or uninstalled mechanical equipment as being installed. Section 2.7.2, .2, dimensions, specifies measurement tolerances. The direction is to measure heights and the dimensions of window and door systems to the nearest 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch, and to take all other measurements to the nearest 15 centimeters or 6 inches. The existing file naming conventions will continue to be used. That is D and E for an existing house and PNN for a new house. 
In Section 2.9.1, Evaluation Type Codes, take special note of the new direction as to when to use each code. Note that typically the sole purpose of creating and submitting a key file is to permit the submission of the corresponding N file. Section 3, Basic Service, discusses all facets of data collection for the basic service with the exception of lower door testing protocols, which are discussed in Section 7. This is by far the largest section of the manual as it details the data collection for the basic service, which is also used to create a base file for the renovation upgrade service. What is the basic service? Section 3.2, Basic Service Overview, describes its intent as being to rate the energy performance of a house and its installed equipment under standard operating conditions. So, if a house simply needs a rating, for example, to participate in a program, the basic service is the most cost-effective route to follow. It could be compared to an eco-energy de-evaluation with minimal homeowner interaction, no identifying of air leakage locations, and no upgrade recommendations. Section 3.3.1 lists tasks and responsibilities of energy advisors. Several bullets here include new or revised content. The first highlighted bullet is in regards to assessing a building envelope component as having a user-specified RSI or R value. A short list of when a user-specified value may be used is contained in the HOT 2000 user guide at the reference provided. The bullets highlighted in blue contain new content that will be expanded upon later in this webinar. Specifically, these are additional data collection for a house designed to have a rating of zero, atypical energy loads, and the Energi rating system lower door test waiver. In the next highlighted bullet, notice that energy advisors are to carry a sample homeowner information sheet to show to and explain to the homeowner. This is not meant to be a lengthy discussion, but just a brief overview of the report so that the homeowner knows what to expect. A final point for Section 3.3.1, energy advisors are required to preview homeowner output before submitting the file or sending the reports and label. This preview would include making sure that the correct photo, address, and other information has been populated on the report and that the rating is reasonable. For the basic service outputs, See Section 3.3.2. Outputs include the Homeowner Information Sheet, EnerGuide Label, Guide to the EnerGuide Label for Homes, and any other relevant publications. To view samples, see Appendices E and F. Under the updated EnerGuide Rating System, there are two sets of operating conditions, Standard Operating Conditions and Household Operating Conditions. Standard operating conditions are used in generating the EnerGuide rating. HOT 2000 automatically applies the standard operating conditions to the file. Typically, no action is required on the energy advisor's part. The collection of household operating conditions applies only to the renovation upgrade service and will be discussed later. Section 3.4.1.1, Reduced Operating Conditions for Zero-Rated Homes, introduces a new provision for using reduced standard operating conditions for houses that are constructed to achieve a rating of zero. Details on eligible reductions for lighting, appliances, and hot water loads are detailed in this section. In this situation, applicable standard operating conditions need to be collected and then modified by the Energy Advisor in HOT 2000. Section 3.5.1, General Information and House Specifications, features several new items. For example, Section 3.5.1.2, Presence of Vermiculite, states that if vermiculite is exposed to the interior environment, proceed with the evaluation, but do not perform an air tightness test. Exposed to the interior environment means that vermiculite insulation is exposed or present within the interior condition space. Hence, if access doors, panels, or an attic hatch must be open to visually see the vermiculite, that is not considered exposed to the interior environment. To select the default air change rate to be used, Appendix J, 
their tightness default value is to be consulted. In this scenario, the homeowner must sign the EnerGuide rating system lower door test waiver, thereby acknowledging that an air tightness test was not performed and that this may impact the rating and will nullify eligibility for air sealing grants should such be available. The exhaust device's depressurization test would also not be performed. Clarification is provided in Section 3.5.1.5, Foundation Soil Conditions. When applicable, a soil condition other than normal conductivity may be recorded. If the energy advisor is unsure of whether the soil is normal or high conductivity, they are to assess the condition as normal conductivity. If the soil is assessed as high conductivity, written justification must be provided. If a slab is constructed on permafrost, this is to be documented. If a house in a permafrost area is built on piers, the soil condition is to be recorded as normal conductivity. A new data collection point is discussed in Section 3.5.1.6, Heated Floor Area, Above Grade and Below Grade. This is a metric used in the calculation of the rated energy intensity of a house. This section defines heated floor area and provides instructions on how to calculate it. Figures and examples are included to provide further explanation. Please review this section carefully. Section 3.5.1.8, House Type, includes a definition of a float home and states that it is to be assessed as a detached house with an open crawl space for modeling purposes. Note, too, that EnerGuide rating system procedures for multi-unit residential buildings are under development. Section 3.5.1.11, Wall Color, includes a new data collection point. That is, if more than 50% of the walls are uninsulated, to record the wall color. Section 3.5.2, Atypical Energy Loads, provides descriptions for seven atypical loads. As defined here, they are energy loads not common to most houses, but that could account for significant energy consumption that are not factored into the rating. Atypical energy loads consist of de-icing cables, extensive exterior lighting, heated garages, hot tubs, room air conditioning, swimming pools, and non-residential occupancy or mixed use. Observed atypical energy loads will be listed in the homeowner information sheet as sources of significant energy use that are not included in the rating, and a note will appear on the label. No details need to be collected. The energy advisor is simply to record the presence of each atypical energy load. Section 3.5.3.1 includes guidance on how glass ceilings and walls are to be assessed and modeled. It states, Assess glass solarium ceilings as a ceiling comprised of the number of windows observed. The same principle applies to glass walls. Section 3.5.3.3, Heel Height, includes direction on the heel height to be used if the heel height is not known, such as from house plans. It reads, use the following default values, 0.1 meters or 0.33 feet for houses constructed before 1990, and 0.13 meters or 0.43 feet for houses constructed in 1990 and newer. There are a couple of things to mention in section 3.5.4.2 wall sections. Where there are multiple wall sections, label each wall section with a name that will be meaningful to the homeowner. This is important because these labels will be displayed on the renovation upgrade report. When might a house wall be recorded as separate? Note the instruction that if a section of wall with differing cladding constitutes more than 10% of the total wall area, then it needs to be assessed as a separate wall section. For a house with brick veneer on the front and vinyl siding on the rest of the walls, the wall sections to be labeled as brick and vinyl, respectively. Section 3.5.4.3, Buffering Effect, refers to a new feature in HAW 2000 that enables the simple modeling of a buffered building envelope component. Energy advisors are to assess and make note of wall sections that are buffered from outside temperatures by an enclosed space as separate wall sections. When modeled as such, 
class 2000 will add RSI 0.16 or R0.9 to the buffered component. An example of this is a wall that is buffered by an attached garage. This is another scenario where a distinct wall label should be defined, such as buffered garage wall. There are a few things to mention in section 3.5.5, floor header. First of all, note that crawl space headers are to be assessed as a separate component. There is also clarification for assessing floor joists embedded in a stone foundation. In such a case, the header would not be assessed as a header, but rather as part of the foundation wall, and the wall height measurement would reflect this. Similar to walls, floor header sections with different construction details such as exterior finish, must be modeled separately. If a header is buffered, be sure to record it in the correct wall section, which of course would also be recorded as buffered. In section 3.5.6.1, again there is the instruction to record a buffered building envelope section, in this case an exposed floor. An example of this is the ceiling of a garage, where there are living quarters above the garage. The ceiling of the garage, that is the exposed floor, would be assessed as being buffered. Section 3.5.7.1, Windows, Geometry Data Collection Requirements, provides new direction on measuring windows. First of all, if the actual window frame dimensions are known, such as from house plans, record these. If the actual dimensions are not known, measure the height and width of the glazing at its outer extremities to the nearest 25 millimeters, or 1 inch, and then add 76 millimeters, or 3 inches, to account for the frame. Glass block installations and windows indoor systems are exceptions to these instructions. In these cases, record the dimensions of the glazing as measured. In existing housing, all windows were most often modeled as being picture windows. A new requirement is to specify the actual window type. The HOT 2000 User Guide in Section 7.6 includes the following detail. For windows that have a window area that's less than 50% operable, model the entire window as a picture window. Low-E detector use is also specified in Section 3.5.7.2. It states, use a low-E detector to determine if a low-E coating is present. For each side of the house, test one window of each window type. Apply the results of the test to all windows of the same type and orientation. Section 3.5.7.3, .3, Windows Data Collection Requirements for the Code Editor, lists the data that is required when using HOT 2000's Code Editor for modeling. First, the window code type must be selected as either Legacy User Defined Input, this screen is identical to the editor screen in HOT 2000 version 1051, or overall window characteristics. When legacy user-defined inputs will be used for modeling, additional data to be collected is the RSI or R value for the center of glass, edge of glass and frame, the frame height, and the center of glass solar heat gain coefficient. When legacy inputs are used, the collection of glazing type, coating tints, fill type, spacer type, and frame material is not required. When overall window characteristics will be used for modeling, additional data to be collected is the overall thermal resistance, RSI or R value, or U value, frame height, and solar heat gain coefficient. When overall window characteristics are used, the collection of spacer type and frame material is not required. Section 3.5.7.5, Doors, Geometry Data Collection Requirements, contains some new instructions. As with windows, measuring the dimensions of door systems is required. The exception to this is a single door with or without inset glazing. For single doors, the height and width do not need to be measured. The use of HOT 2000 defaults is acceptable. For all other doors that exit the building envelope, Record the actual frame dimensions if known. Otherwise, measure the door system's frame at its visible extremities to the nearest 25 millimeters or 1 inch. Windows and door systems are to be assessed as per the window instructions, with the exception of the dimension measurements. 
things are to be taken at the outermost extremities of the glazing and recorded exactly as measured. Section 3.5.7.7, Buffered, states that buffered windows and doors are to be recorded as being installed in the correct wall section, which would also be buffered. For example, a door leading to an attached garage is to be assessed as installed in the buffered wall that is adjacent to the garage. As previously mentioned, crawl space headers are to be assessed as separate components. This direction is repeated in section 3.5.8, Foundations, as it refers the reader to section 3.5.5, Floor Header. Section 3.5.8.2, Crawl Space, contains new content. A crawl space's floor slab no longer needs to be less than 0.6 meters or 2 feet below ground to be assessed as a crawl space. Also new, an open crawl space shall be assessed as an exposed floor if other foundations are present in a house. As mentioned earlier, a float home is to be modeled as an open crawl space. When there are multiple foundations, assign meaningful labels to each as these labels will be used on the homeowner information sheet and renovation upgrade service report. And a couple more changes that aim for crawl spaces is the wall height measurement. The wall height of a crawl space is to be measured from the slab or unfinished floor to the bottom of the joist above. The change is being that the wall height is the full height of the crawl space and not just the above grade height and that the measurement is to the bottom of the floor joist. Section 3.5.10.2 refers to three new HOT 2000 fields, floors relation to frost line, integral footings, and heated floor. These selections do not impact the house's NRI rating, but will impact the modeling of the reference house. Regarding the exterior finish applied to the floor above a foundation, Section 3.5.10.5, Floors Above Foundation, data collection requirements include the instruction to determine the finish applied to the underside of the joist and to record its presence if more than 50% of the total underside of the joist has a finished ceiling, for example, drywall. In such a case, record the predominant ceiling material as being applied to the entire floor above foundation. Pay particular attention to section 3.5.11, Ventilation Systems, for instructions on how to assess ventilation systems and the data that needs to be collected for each type. Much of the content in this section is new, reflecting changes to the ventilation model in HOT 2000. For example, ventilation systems are to be assessed as being part of the whole house ventilation system or as supplemental components, both of which are defined in this section. Note, too, that data collection is more rigorous for components that are part of the whole house ventilation system than supplemental components. Another significant change is the requirement to record the presence of each ventilation system type separately. The energy advisor is to record the presence of each HRV, ERV, bathroom fan, range hood, or utility fan that is part of the whole house ventilation system as each will be modeled individually in HOT 2000. In sections 3.5.11.3 and 4, more specific directions are provided. If bathroom fans are not part of the whole house ventilation system, record only up to two bathroom fans. If range hoods are present but are not part of the whole house ventilation system, record just one range hood. With regards to a utility fan, it may be a supply or exhaust fan, or may perform both functions. Section 3.5.12, Heating Systems, begins by explaining how to differentiate between a principal heating system and a supplementary heating system. Note that a principal system is used to meet at least 70% of the heating load. Section 3.5.12.3, includes clarification on acceptable methods for determining the efficiencies of heating systems in order of preference for oil and gas-fired heating systems, both condensing and non-condensing. Section 3.5.14, Furnace or Boiler Data Collection Requirements, 
includes the direction to record the presence of a non-dampered combustion air supply duct. The Energuide rating system, HAW 2000 User Guide, includes instructions on how to determine an adjusted flue diameter to account for its presence. This new data point also applies to other heating system types and water heaters. Sections 3.5.14.1 to 4 are intended to provide assistance to energy advisors in determining a heating system fuel source and equipment type. Section 3.5.15, Combined Space and Domestic Water Heating Classification, begins by listing the four classifications of combos under the updated Energuide rating system. The first two are based on the actual equipment used to heat the water, and the last two are based on the equipment's performance test method as either CSA P9-11 or CSA P10-07. Sections 3.5.17 and 3.5.18 reflect changes to HOT 2000. Section 3.5.17, CSA P9-11, lists the data collection requirements for P9-11 tested equipment as manufacturer, model number, energy source, and the number of systems installed. The HOT 2000 P9 model contains a drop-down library for manufacturer and model number to simplify data collection and expedite modeling. Moving on to Section 3.5.18, CSA P10-07, the integrated mechanical system model has been removed from HOT 2000. A modeling procedure has been developed using HOT 2000's P9 and ventilation screens. This section lists the on-site data to be collected and refers to the HOT 2000 user guide for instructions on determining the rest of the data required for modeling. Under supplementary heating systems, a new data collection requirement is a manufacturer and model number for a sealed gas fireplace. Similar to the approach in space heating, Section 3.6, Domestic Water Heater Systems and Rainwater Heat Recovery Units, begins by offering tips on how to identify various water heater types. Something new in Section 3.6.1, Domestic Water Heaters, Data Collection Requirements for Water Heater Efficiency, is that either the energy factor or the standby heat loss, thermal efficiency, and input capacity may be collected. Another new data collection requirement is a coefficient of performance for an integrated heat pump water heater. HOT 2000's water heater model has been modified to accept these additional inputs. Footnote 6 contains the clarification, only integrated hot water heat pumps located inside the building envelope that use indoor air and vent the air indoors can be modeled in HOT 2000. Consult Natural Resources Canada for the data collection and modeling procedures for all other installation configurations. This note describes the data collection requirements for a D superheater. It says, if a ground source heat pump D superheater with an electric tank type DHW system is present, collect the data as described in this section with the exception of the energy factor for which an energy factor of 1.0 is to be assigned. For all other DHW fuel sources, ignore the presence of the D superheater. A drain water heat recovery model has been added to HOT 2000 that contains manufacturer and model drop-down menus. Section 3.6.2, Drain Water Heat Recovery Units, Data Collection Requirements, lists the data collection requirements for these units as the manufacturer name, model number, and the configuration, specifying the destination of the preheated water. Alternatively, if the manufacturer and model are unknown, the instruction is to determine the length of the unit and its configuration. This concludes Webinar 1 of the Energide Rating System Technical Procedures Version 15.2. Part 2 will continue from this point in the procedures to the end.